Hello everybody, my name is Ian Kirk Pattycake, I'm an author and robot, and today we're going to be trying something new, and uh, we'll get to that in a second. Before we get started, please remember, if you like this kind of content or what I do on this channel, like it, share it, subscribe it. Number two is be on the lookout for the Dead End Drive audiobook coming out, hitting the stores near the end of the month, if not in early May, so keep that in mind, and ask for it at your local libraries, then you can borrow it without having to pay a cent. But and third thing, and I can't believe it's the third thing this time, the May Lemoy is open down in the description below. So if you would like to join the Lemoy contest or whatever we would like to call it, a fun good time, let's call it the Lemoy fun good time, uh, check out the prompt down below that is marked May prompt. Yes. And I hope to see you next month in, in that because it is so much fun. And also check out the playlist on this channel for previous Lemoys to see just exactly the flavor. Don't worry, you don't have to be depressing or you can be depressing. I don't care what you write. With all that said, let's get started. So what I wanted to try on this channel is a series called Author to Author where I pose you guys questions over on Minds.com, which is the social media website that I use. If you're not part of it, you should join. There's a pretty great writing and creative community over there and it's constantly growing. And there are so many opportunities to meet awesome authors, great there's a great atmosphere, lots of positivity and encouragement and all of that. So head on over and follow me at Kirk Patty Cake and you will meet so many other authors and so many other creatives, not just authors, but especially head on over if you want to be involved in this author to author series. So what I wanted to do was regularly pose you guys questions over there on something big, writing related, book related, you know, craft related and get your guys' takes on whatever you're thinking or whatever you do or whatever your references are. Because as you've noticed, I uh, go on to Reddit every now and then to read over author or writer questions to give advice. And so now I would like to expand that a little bit and just ask other authors how they deal or what they think about re relatively, maybe sometimes specific things or maybe big picture things. So of course, the very first week, very first episode of author to author had to be what are some of your hottest takes for writing the writing industry writing advice or storytelling you know let's let's go out the gate hot and as you can tell we are prepared set on fire and I don't know if you can hear that but there is some some thunder and lightning going on out there right now so on this first episode of hottest writing takes let's see what kind of stuff you guys had to say the Filthy Armchair says, My hottest, filthiest take on this topic, do not virtue signal any sides. Just write whatever you want and screw it if people are going to attack you because there will always be someone offended no matter what you do. That's it. Seems simple, but it's getting rarer and rarer these days to find. I agree. I find... I've been getting very frustrated um, with sometimes in finding alternate authors that are less mainstream because then even you end up with people still writing politically but in the other way and I'm I don't know if this is is this a hot take I don't want to write read about political takes or about political or social values I want to read about a character or story or a life and if that stuff shows up in there eventually because it makes sense sure but I'm tired of reading like the next George Orwell trying to be the next George Orwell you know I just want a story that's not trying to educate me to say the right things you know Daniel and Angel says, Mary Sue and Gary Stu need to be taken out back and shot repeatedly. Then to ensure they do not return, burn the corpses and pour salt on the ashes. I too am not a fan of the Mary Sue or the Gary Stu, other than laughing. I think I can laugh a little more at the Gary Stu than the Mary Sue. Um, and I will tell you why eventually when I do a Gary Stu video, maybe next week, I don't know. But I did do a video on Mary Sue and I'm reading two books right now that feature a Mary Sue as the main character. And it's so boring. It is so mind-numbing that nothing bad ever happens to these characters, and they're always just perfect, and they're always just awesome. If you're a Mary Sue lover, let me know in the comments down below, because... Adonis says, I wrote my hottest take into a Minds blog post a while ago, and they deal with how writers interact with each other. The greatest hits of the series are The Weave is Always Wrong and Nobody Cares About Your World Building, but I think there ain't no such thing as free labor is the one I would brand on people's foreheads if I could. And 
I read that post after he um, mentioned it. And what he gets down to in that is that if you are an author and you show up to a writing group for critiques or any of that, don't just go in and expect that people, everybody in there is just going to throw themselves at you to fix or to work on your critique and give you everything you need and that you don't need to be a contributing member of that relationship or of that group. You go into a group and you have to contribute first because there's a give and take in those relationships of critique and of because there's a give and take relationship in critiques. If you just go in and throw your 200,000 word manuscript at people and you don't intend to give that you know, give that favor back of critiquing other people's works with just as much detail or as um, as much respect as you would like for your work, you're kind of being a disrespectful jerk because there is a give and take. This is a business and this is, these are professional contacts, professional relationships that you are making. Go in, be respectful, put in the work that you, put in the work and the labor that will enable you to bring it back once you need help. Because why would anybody help you if you're just gonna show up, come in, want some help and then walk away? Fumo Herder says the entire publishing industry, indeed, the global economy is built around the fragile egos of 13 year old girls. The YA industry definitely. And I feel like I could say a lot of adult women that act like 13 year olds. Lauren Dean says you need a proofreader. Even if you don't think you do, you do. You may even need to pay one, one that's not your friend. Absolutely. Always, forever. You'll need some more eyes on whatever it is you're working on. <laughs> Little Goblin says, Your first writing, your first draft will always suck, no matter how long you've been writing for. Just accept that your first draft is going to be kind of messy at least, and just get over it and keep going. For sure, you're going to get stuck on yourself if you just, if you try to get it out perfect. And it is a skill to learn how to push past letting something be mediocre or crappy and then come, you know, coming back to it later, but ugh. Display name for rent says the mainstream media is a lie factory intended to fuck you out of your future. Do not write for them. And if you want to even write at all, you better go into politics because Biden attempting to make working for yourself illegal. How is this a hot take? You young people better wake the fuck up and start paying attention to old people that are stealing your livelihoods. Al Parker says, don't take Stephen King's advice on writing. Oh my gosh, there are so many people. Every time you say, hey, can, can somebody point me to a book about writing to help me writing on writing by Stephen King? Maybe that's why I'm not a bestseller yet on my first book, because I didn't read Stephen King's on writing. What am I missing out on, guys? Vladimir's hottest take is ignore everything. Now, I'm going to interpret that as ignore all of the rules, ignore all the naysayers, ignore the voice in your head. That's how I interpret ignore everything. And that is great advice because there are so many people out there when you start looking for advice or looking for help, they're going to drop all of these rules on you and say you have to do this or you have to do that or you're not allowed to do this or you're not allowed to do that. And it's gotten a lot worse in the writing community where they say if you're a specific kind of person, you're not allowed to do certain, yes, yes, they say that you are not allowed to do certain things, or you have to write in a certain boundary, or they reference some big author and their writing advice and say, this is how you have to do it. Ignore everything and write your story, especially in the first draft, especially in the second draft, and anybody can fight me on this. The only thing that's important when you're first getting your story down is getting your story out of you, and then it's the refinery phase. But again, ignore everything. LMC Ninja says, deeper meanings are overrated. I'm not writing some deep commentary on insert thing here for some English critics analysis. I'm writing because dragons. <laughs> and I love this so much. I actually have a thing over there on my idea, video idea wall that was talking about why do you write? And maybe that's gonna be a question um, in the future for this is why do you write? But so many people get caught up in this idea of I want to have this big picture idea or I want to write about this big morality thing or this big values thing and how do I write a story involving this deeper meaning and there's this pressure at times it feels like there's you have to be writing something that's bigger than just a story about some characters doing something cool or going through an event and you don't I, yeah sh 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 shut up schizophrenia alert but there are these characters and these people that just come to the brain and I have to get them out and I want to show other people and I and I compulsively want to create even when I'm in kind of a meh mood I compulsively 
come up with ideas and want to write and want to create and want to share just these things that I see with other people. And so I put it down and most of the time it is just for entertainment and maybe other things come out of that, but I'm not writing to educate people. And I see that a lot in the writing community too. I think writing to educate covers the last couple of years mantras for the writing community and the writing industry genre. Mm -hmm. Writing because something is cool, writing because you like something, writing just because you're inspired or creating just because you're inspired or creating just because you like something. Like if you have a specific storyline that you just like or a plot or a or a trope or or something completely different like the inspiration for Dead End Drive. If you just have this thing that you're like, I really like that and I want to do something with it, that is a good enough reason to write. It doesn't have to have a deeper meaning. The blue curtains can just be the blue curtains and not because he is in an extreme depressive state because his wife left him and blah, 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 and the color blue. Yes. Isa says, you have to love your writing first. Don't write to check off boxes or to try and meet someone else's ideas of good writing. Write what hooks you. And that kind of goes with what Vladimir said is ignore everything. This again, write what you care about, write what you love, write what interests you. Don't write because somebody is telling you you have to do this and this and this and this or else you're never gonna get published. C.L. Carhart says, everything has been said already, it seems, but on the writing industry, you already know my hot take. Don't be Zon exclusive, Kindle Unlimited, if you can help it. I am so down for this because I see so many authors all the time. And I and I get there are limited opportunities and limited areas in which people can go, especially if you're overseas. You have to pick, like, especially if you're overseas. Um, but Amazon does not have the greatest record with authors, not, not non-abusing authors. Um, I'll link it at the end of this video. But if you followed the ACX stuff from last year, Amazon was basically stealing audiobooks from authors last year where they were allowing people to purchase the audiobooks while using, you know, their credits, allowing people to listen to the whole of the audiobook and then within a year's period anybody could return the audiobooks for full credit back, but that credit would come from the author, not from Amazon. So Amazon was basically renting out authors audiobooks and not paying the author. It became this huge big thing, the writer's guild became involved and all of that. Amazon also, there are, so, there are so many other issues that come with going Amazon exclusive that I personally wouldn't want to concede. One of them is that when you give Amazon the ability to be your publisher and your distributor, if they decide they don't like you, well, you have to go and look into that contract to see if you could even take your book somewhere else if they decide that to pull your book from the Amazon store. Because if it's anything like the Audible ACX, if it's, because if it's anything like the ACX exclusivity contract, with the ACX contract, you get stuck in a seven year contract. So if ACX decides they don't wanna share your audiobook anymore with their distributors or on their store, they still own the distribution rights for that book for seven years, even if they aren't publishing it through their websites anymore. And Amazon, as your book publisher, I can't say what their specific things are with exclusivity rights. I know that if you go through Kindle Unlimited, you have given them exclusivity rights, so you can't publish your book anywhere outside of their distributors. And I know that includes Google Play. Um, I don't know how far that extends with selling books out of your, you know, your bag or your on yourself. And they don't distribute to library catalogs, so you won't see your book in a library, but they get you. With that 70%, you get to keep with the Kindle Unlimited, but what else are you giving up? Because I bet you most people aren't looking at the contracts as closely as they should for what exactly they're giving Amazon for that Kindle Unlimited um, benefit. It's The devil is in the details, and they try to get you with those shiny numbers of the higher royalty rates. Just just do your research okay if you're going to go Amazon exclusive and I get that if you if you really have to because there are situations where you do have to that's your only choice but just be cognizant read your contracts before you agree to them and know what rights you're giving away Jessica Marie Baumgartner says most writers don't have the work ethic to improve and get anywhere in this tough industry they're too busy posting about all their writing than actually doing the damn work hashtag salty <laughs> true facts True fact, I see, oh, I feel like that's almost everything. No shade. I feel that like that's almost everything that I see going on in the, sub, the subreddit are writing all the time. It's everybody saying, 
asking for permission to write something or saying that they can't write something or making excuse excuses and I feel like every time I do a video about how do you get your work done you sit your butt down and you just get the freaking work done that's the only way that it's gonna come out yes Mega Mouth Game says, write your story for you and no one else. If you enjoy what you've written, the odds are that there are a bunch of other people out there who will too. Exactly. And also, I don't know about you guys, but I can tell when the author doesn't like a character or something that they've written, and it sucks the enjoyment out of reading the book for me. Um, because you can feel that vibe, and you can feel which characters the author absolutely hates, and I mean, maybe this is a me. I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts in the comments down below. Do you guys actually actually like seethingly hate any of your characters or with your bad guy characters are they the type that you love to hate so you love them for everything bad that they do or their personalities or do you actually like physically despise those characters dana says have tits it won't matter if you're a bad writer that is a hot take that's also not correct don't sleep says one start looking into self-publishing because traditional publishing is dying out two write for yourself and not because someone wants you to write three always proofread your work or hire someone who can help proofread it. And four, don't give up on yourself and your passion even if you don't sell any books whatsoever. Absolutely to all of that. You can see that publishers are getting more and more scared of taking chances or finding new books, finding new voices, to the point that they just wanna keep hiring the same, publishing the same big names that have been the same big names for 40, 50 years, 60 years, whatever, Stephen King looking at you. And they're always gonna have these same people there because they're a sure thing and then you know we're gonna get blood injections into the old people so that they never die so that they can just but in all reality they're probably gonna hire ghost writers for any of these big names later down the line just to keep the same names on the shelves when you know they're not writing anymore because they only want the sure thing and they're afraid of controversy they're afraid of the cancel culture stuff and they're afraid to hear new voices always try to get another pair of eyes or two or three other pairs of eyes if you can just for proofreading and don't give up on yourself phoebe arum says less is more but still tell everyone everything i have to say i don't necessarily think you have to explain everything word for word on how it works or why it works the way that it does especially in things like fantasy sci-fi and magic realism I think it's fair to explain some things, most things, especially big things, but I think you can keep a fair amount of magic in there or leave leave level for, leave place for speculation or for guesswork or for theories. You don't want to leave anything big enough that's going to cause readers to be like, what the frick, this deal is unfinished. But you also w want to leave readers asking for more or room to come up with their own theories because that's pretty fun. But that's what I think. Let me know what you guys think. Derry Lajos says, whatever you write, you have to be truthful to yourself. Kind of paraphrasing Hemingway. Yes, write for yourself, tell what you see, and write what you are wanting to write. I think that's one of the things I always worried about with traditional publishing because every single conference you go to and every agent you talk to, they will, and every trad author that you talk to, they'll all tell you that the agent always puts input into your story and changing things in your story to try to get it to go a certain way. And while crit partners are definitely helpful, they aren't helpful if they aren't trying to help you figure out how to best accomplish what your goal is. If somebody's trying to rewrite your story in their voice, that's not going to be helpful for an author. They have to understand where you're coming from, what you're trying to accomplish with the story, and help you go from there. And if you have crit partners that don't really understand what you're doing, then that's fine. They don't need to comment on that work. You're not really helpful as a crit partner if your person is trying to accomplish something and you t just straight up tell them, no, you can't, you should write it this way how I would write it. That's not super helpful. I'm going off, I'm going way off on a tangent here, so I'm going to more or less end it there. But if you have questions on how to be a good crit partner, I've done a couple of videos on those in the back of this channel somewhere. Erwin, the author, says, one, write to offend. Two, your tone and theme are more important than your plot and setting. Three, pick your audience and please them. Four, the only way you write what you want is if you're indie. And five, never appeal to people intended on being outraged. I would say I probably write to offend is super hot take because I don't think most people write to offend, but they end up writing stuff that could be offensive to somebody. Their tone and theme, I think are super important because you set how somebody is going to be taking your story. 
plot and setting, I think, follow. Honestly, I don't know if I can separate those four things. Um, I think they all play together. But pick your audience and please them for sure. And never appeal to people intended on being outraged. Correct, you will never please them. We got Minaya as the last commenter in on the hottest takes. And Minaya says, so, I don't know if this is a hot take, but I can't stand a lack of communication in characters. There are hundreds of shows, books, movies out there where the entire premise could be resolved in half the time had the characters actually spoken to each other like regular people. See Stranger Things and Grimm. It's such a lazy technique that drives me crazy. I literally shout at my TV slash book, just tell them already. Why are you keeping this a secret? I can't stand it. I can't stand it either. Lack of communication is one of the most lazy plot devices ever for drama. Oh my gosh. And every single time I think of lack of communication, I think of Awkward, MTV's Awkward. I don't know if anybody else actually watched that show, but it was just like episode after episode of the same two people refusing to talk to each other. Episode after episode of these two who were supposed to be dating and they'd one would walk in on the other in a weird situation with somebody of the opposite sex and then they'd get jealous and then they would refuse to talk to the one they walked in on and then the one that walked they walked in on was very confused as to why the other one was mad at them and they would just go on for episodes about this irritation and then finally they would talk and they'd be like oh that was nothing and then the very next episode you've got it the other way around and it was just constantly the cycle of walk in misunderstand don't talk finally talk fix it and reverse it's so bad if you can avoid this if, if your entire plot can be fixed by just having the characters converse from the beginning oh, please please find another way please oh my gosh anyway that is the last of the hot takes what did you guys think do you have any hot takes for the writing industry storytelling writing advice any of that leave them down in the comments below i'm looking forward to hearing from you and i thought this was pretty fun pretty fruitful and interesting to see everybody else's takes i'm looking forward to more of this and if you would like to be involved in the next author to author and give your opinion head over to minds.com and start making friends with the awesome writing community over there i look forward to seeing you and thank you for stopping by with all that said have a great week and um don't die Dear Madam Astra, That's me. We regret to inform you that on August 1st, your employer, Agatha Jane Benedict, owner of the Benedict Estate, peacefully passed away in her sleep. Oh, that's so sad. Wait, 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 wait. wait. Let me try that again. <clears throat> oh. Oh. My goodness, that's so sad. Yeah, I think I'm ready. With millions of dollars on the line and the opportunity for your every need to be taken care of for life, <laughs> tell me, is there anything more valuable than that? I didn't think so. Dead and Drive is a dark comedy novel that makes three promises. One, an illustrious estate in Louisiana. Two, an opulent dinner affair for all in attendance. And three, most importantly of all, lots and lots of competitive murder. So if you're looking for a cozy book to settle in with for the spooky season, I've only got one question for you. Will I see you at the Will Reading? <laughs>